Hi, how you doing? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Puppet Warp Tool in Photoshop. So this is a really, really fun tool that you can use to manipulate shapes on people and move their limbs around. It's really, really good fun. And it's quite easy to do as well. So I'm going to walk you through the process. So the first thing you want to do is actually isolate the subject. So this tool works really, really well when you've got studio shots like this. It can be done when you've got a complex background, but it, it, the results can vary. It just needs a little bit more work, that's all. So I'm going to go up to the quick selection tool and I'm going to select subject. There we go. And I'm just going to zoom in and I'm just going to add this section in here. So I'm on the plus tool there on the brush and just make sure I actually get the rest of this leg in here and you can just spend your time going around just making sure that everything is how you need it to be and that looks pretty good to me so once I'm happy with that I'm going to select and mask and that's given as our subject you can play around with these settings if you want to I'm not going to because uh, just for the speed of the tutorial it doesn't really need it to be honest I'm going to select output to new layer with layer mask and then hit OK Okay, so that's given us our our subject there. So we've isolated him from the background. The next thing I'm going to do is right click and then I'm going to convert to smart object. There we go. So now I'm just going to click on the eyeball just to get rid of that background layer at the top there and click on the background layer here. And now what we need to do is just fill this area in. So it's really simple. Just select the lasso tool and we just want to go around the subject. Here we go. And I'm going to press shift and backspace and then press OK. And that's going to fill this area in for us with content aware. And then to get rid of this selection, just press control command D. So there we go. We've now got a clear background to work from. So now we can bring in our guy again by clicking on the eyeball. And there is our guy. So it looks the same. But what we've done is isolated him from the background. So I'm going to click on the background copy at the top here. Go up to edit and then I'm going to select Puppet Warp. So this is now loaded up and what you'll have at the top here is Show Mesh. So yours is probably like this to start with. You can get rid of that just by clicking on that, that little square box at the top there. So all we need to do is select points that we want to change. So I'm going to select one there, there, one there. And you can pretty much do this wherever you want on the picture. There we go. So let's just start with this for now. So all I need to now do is come to that point and I can start dragging it. Same with the elbow. I can elongate that. I can bring it forward. And maybe let's bring his arm up. Maybe bring this down so it's further to him. And then we can adjust his head. So you can see you pretty much have full control over the whole of the image and you can get some really, really interesting shapes. So this is really helpful when you're doing shots like this and you want to get that perfect pose. You can, and, and if the dancer just misses it, then of course you can just really, really refine it. So if we look at the selections that you've got at the top here, so I'm just going to put the mesh back on. You see we've got normal, and that's the normal mode that we're in. Then you have rigid, so if I select that, what this does is if I move any parts of these points, it becomes a lot more rigid. So it's um, a little bit easier to work with, so to speak. It's uh, yeah, it just makes makes the movement a little bit more rigid. So you don't get distortion. Then we've got distort. So if we click on that. What you'll see is that there's actually distortion on this. So this arm is bigger than this arm here. If I was to elongate this leg, I could have that almost coming out so it's like 3d just yeah like a 3d movie so that's what that does there so if we just go back to normal it will just change it back to a normal perspective for us okay then we have the density so this is normal that's what we've been working on we have fewer points so if we click on that you'll see that there's fewer points on this mesh now and then if we come up to more points you'll see that there's a lot more points that we can work with this will give you the most precise 
selections. So it's a good idea to try and work with in points that intersect. Okay, that's going to give you the best results. So for instance, if I was clicking there, I could pull this up. And if I was clicking here, I could pull in that jacket there. There we go. So this will enable you to really fine tune stuff so you can bring feet up here. If I wanted to, I could click on there and just bring his toe up a little bit. And same with this point here, I could make that further round. And if I click here, even though there's nothing that I can move, what this will enable me to do is just distort that thigh so it looks a little bit more natural. Same with this leg here, it's looking a little bit long. So we could just click on this point here and just bring it down. There we go. That's it. There we go. So that gives us um, more points to work with. The expansion at the minute is on two pixels. So this is to do with the mesh that's around the subject. So you can see as I increase that, you can see that mesh is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's working around the subject. So you can increase that. Sometimes you'll need to do that. Um, if you're moving a, a, a subject or a person and you just want a little bit more control, then you can do that. And of course, you can go to the minus as well, so you can make that smaller. Um, if you want to reset that, just press the escape key on your keyboard and it will go back to two pixels. Okay. The next thing you've got is uh, pin depth. So what this enables you to do is decide whether or not you want something at the back or front of the subject. So let me bring in his arm over here. You can see if I take this mesh away, you can see that that's behind his head now. So what I can do is click on this and it will bring it to the front. So you can see there now that hand is in the front of his face and that gives us a lot of play and opportunity to work with. So we can just click on the back there and it will still show you where the, where the, where the finger is at the back of the head there. So you can really manipulate this and yeah, get this exactly how you want it. And it is a case of just messing around and coming up with a few ideas that look a little bit natural. The other thing that you can do as well is you can click on these points here that are selected. If you hold the shift key down, you can then select multiple points. So if I was to select all of them and then move, all of that is going to move. So that again is going to help us with our positioning and really help us get something that looks really, really natural. And if you do make a mistake that you can just press the back key here, this this arrow and that will reset everything so you don't have to don't have to worry about trying to um, you know if you've messed up your image and you want to start again just click on that and it will it will reset everything for you so the art with this is to do things really really subtly so really subtle and take your time with it so once you're happy and you're good to go then just click on the tick and there you go there is the final result. Now, if you want to go back, you can just double click where it says puppet warp here and you'll see the points come back up and you can then come here and make your changes again. And once you're happy, click on the tick. And then if you want to look at the before and after, just click on the eyeball here and you'll see that's the before and that's the after. So you can really mess around and get some really interesting shapes with this. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I look forward to seeing your images. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.